We're going to get started with our next session. Um, this is Azal Chiplak, and she's going to present on power of data mapping with DocMap. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my name is Hazal Chiplak. I'm working uh, as a data engineer at eLife Sciences. eLife is a non-profit organization that publishes uh, research about pub life and uh, medical sciences. And today I'm going to talk about what uh, power of doc, uh, data mapping with doc maps and how it was helpful during the switch of eLife new model. And by the end of this presentation, you will have a clear understanding what DocMap is, what is eLife new model and role of DocMap, and why we have chosen to use DocMap, and I will additionally give some use cases during the speech. Uh, in a basic definition, DocMap is a framework to uh, represent editorial process in a machine-readable way. Uh, this uh, definition raises two key questions, like what is machine-readable and why it is important, and what is an editorial process. Let's start with uh, machine-readability, and uh, this is an example doc map. I know it's very hard to read, uh, but I wanted to share one whole example. It's a real-life uh, doc map. And as you see, it is a structured data representation. It is um, showing the complex relationships and metadata uh, in a standard format, uh, which making it machine readable. And that means computers can easily understand and process this data without human help. So why is it important when it is machine readable? With readable that means it helps automate tasks and speed up the process and reduce human errors. So, uh, DocMaps doesn't use something uh, new, like uh, as a standard format. We, it is built on uh, well-known standards like Jason LD, and we have some ontologies, spar ontologies like Fabio. I will explain about uh, more, like give more details about those ontologies later on. Let's continue with what is an editorial process. In a basic definition, editorial process is a, a journey of a paper from submission to publication. And uh, in this process, uh, papers will un undergo a preview process, which is uh, very important for uh, establishing trust in science. And in a traditional model, the story behind this journey is uh, remain hidden. In, hidden. Uh, we only see the paper when it has a version of record. I mean, it's published. So, uh, otherwise, all this process uh, remain hidden and as if they are, it, if, as if they never happened. And to make this process. Um, more transparent and fair, eLife introduced a new model. And uh, instead of making a final decision uh, on whether accept or reject a paper, eLife started publishing each version uh, with, along with its reviews. We are calling that as a re reviewed preprints. So make all this information uh, accessible to everyone, uh, we needed, to, we needed a way to organize and represent this data, which is, that is where DocMap projects came in. And this is, uh, again, a DocMap, and then that is an enhanced preprint platform that is basically the human-friendly version of DocMap. Uh, as you see here, there is all steps, and then you are seeing in that Right-hand side, all these uh, details are available in a human-friendly version. By the way, I will call this enhanced preprint platform time to time EPP. So just don't get confused. What does it mean? It is just basically eLife website. And yes, this is a brief representation of eLife new model. So imagine we have... Uh, 
There is researchers who want to publish their paper at eLife. First of all, they need to submit their preprints and then our experts examine this paper to determine if they, um, if eLife has the expertise to review that paper or due to limited capacity, we uh, experts need to decide whether to put more value by a peer review process. And once they decide to review that paper, and our system will create a doc map for that uh, paper, which gives, uh, gives, gives us details about preparent, when it is decided to review, and it is how it uh, looks like in the website. This is a preview because this paper hasn't been published yet. This is uh, just a preview functionality of EPP use and has preparent platform use. This is for quality checks and we want to see how does it look like. And there is another detail, like when it is sent for peer review. And meanwhile, um, uh, this uh, peer review process going on and there is no rejection after that point and experts uh, Expert public reviews will be available in uh, another doc map once all this process finished. And there will be an, uh, something else as well, eLife assessments according to those uh, reviews. And this is an example of eLife assessments and it is still preview. We didn't publish that paper yet, bear with me, we will publish it soon. And uh, that is another thing. There is editor details. How does they look like in the uh, doc map and how is it looking like in the websites? And once uh, the pub production team decide to this paper ready to go, they will add a published date into the system and our uh, data pipeline will gather this data to add another step into doc map. So that will be a manuscript published step. And from now on, this uh, manuscript is uh, published publicly. It is not private anymore, and there is a new review preference. And uh, after that point, uh, authors can decide to have a revision version. Once they decide that revision version, these all steps will repeat again from the peer review process, and then they all these new steps will be added into DocMap, or they can decide to uh, publish a VR, and uh, so this step will be added also into the uh, DocMap. And what, if they decide send to another journal. Unfortunately, we don't have this data. But a uh, version of records uh, looks like that in the uh, doc map, and how is it in the website as well. And let's explain why we choose to use doc map. First of all, doc map uh, using uh, agreed upon standards uh, to align with editorial process. We have ontologies, SPAR ontologies like Fabio, like PSO, which was a publishing status ontology, publishing roles ontology, and publishing uh, workflow ontology. That means rather than creating new models, uh, developers can use these reliable and adaptable models. So another thing is, uh, reason is uh, this pro doc map provides a structured timeline and which is um, promotes transparency and perfectly aligns with our commitment to, uh, to open science. And ensuring all these steps are visible uh, and accessible to everyone. And doc maps also versatile and extensible uh more than just a guideline uh, we it can it is standard and uh, taxonomy makes it can be adaptable uh, for different groups with diverse needs uh, I only show the uh, e enhanced preparent platform in the use cases but actually we have another users as well uh, that uh, shows the best 
I will uh, mention them later, but I just want to show something else, this extensibility. This is just, we recently, a couple of weeks ago, added into DocMap. Uh, our papers had some related content, like related podcasts, related articles or collections. So we wanted to make it visible in our uh, website as well. So we added that part into DocMap and now it is visible uh, <coughs> and accessible for everyone. And these are other implementations of DocMap. Uh, I've mentioned about enhanced preprint many times and let me tell about more uh, the other ones. We uh, BioArchive and MedArchive, these are preprint servers, are using our DocMap as well to track which preprints are under a peer review process. And there is Kotahi, they are using our DocMap as well to uh, publish uh, publish peer reviews, actually, like uh, we are sending peer reviews, it is still private, and then they are publishing uh, the, these reviews uh, under control of editorial team. And um, there is SITI, SITI is created by eLife uh, to help scientists and researchers uh, focus their attention on preprints that have been peer-reviewed by trusted gro groups. They are uh, creating their own doc maps and uh, for preprint evaluation and cr creation. And EuroPMC use that doc maps, uh, what society provides. And Crossref is um, our production team use our doc map to make Crossref Crossref deposits. And that is the implementations and summary. And DocMap is consistent and uh, ensures consistency through standards and the taxonomy. And ver versatile can be adapted for various aspects from a publisher's perspective. And extensible, handle everything from simple reviews to complex editorial uh, processes. And like as a last, last sentence, I can say DocMap simplifies the publishing process and enhancing accessibility and transparency and making our process more open and uh, inclusive. And thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, these are, this is my dog, by the way. I lost uh, the dog about um, eight months ago, so I wanted to share his <laughs> photo as well. And um, yeah, these are my um, uh, contact details. Uh, feel free to contact with me. Thank you. And I can get other, like, if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Great job. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, I'm going to go here and then back there. <laughs> Hi. Uh, so, if I'm a scientist and I want to publish, do I have to know this format or do I have like a user interface to help me build or it's just internal for, ah, okay, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> uh, no, you don't have to know, but actually it is good to know because in traditional model, uh, scientists still thinking about to have traditional model because it is seems more... Uh, acceptable because changing all these things is not that easy it t takes time but in this model it is very transparent every details from submission to uh, publication will be visible for everyone and all this um, I don't know process what editors do will be available so if you are into like open signs and being more transparent so knowing that maybe will be helpful for as a scientist for you Hi, um, I have a question in two parts. So if I understood correctly, with the new model, you generate the DOI only for the reviewed preprint, not for the first preprint. Is that correct?
so the question was if, um, because I know Crossref has this workflow that you can um, group or connect the preprint and the review. So I wonder if you are connecting the review somehow in the metadata. Uh, you mean like connecting these reviews with preprints, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It is uh, totally connected, and uh, we have like this published version will have eLife assessment and this public reviews, and also it will show the what preprint it's belong to, where is the source coming from. How did that standard come together and who's responsible for maintaining it? the doc map standard? Like who created that structure um, and how did like groups get together and decide that that was going to be the standard? Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, there is a knowledge features, uh, if I remember, oh, sorry, I forgot, I'm a bit excited. And uh, I think uh, there is a group of, uh, they want to, they create doc maps first to represent data in a structured way, and then it becomes to for the publishing industry more, and then they put these taxonomies and in it. And these people are responsible, but eLife is one of the first users, so we are, and uh, Saiti as well, we are actually developing and putting these standards together. So it is not very common, but we are expecting it to be more common in the future. Okay, thank you for listening to me. And <laughs>